CYC is a free channel presents the Word of God for everyone. Your support will help us to continue the mission. Visit our website, cycnow.com. Even a dollar will make a difference. Hello and welcome to your program called Hyperlink where we address the youth on many topics concerning them and their parents. In our previous episode, we discussed the issue of teen drug abuse. Today, we will answer questions relating to teen depression and its effects on the afflicted and the people around him. But first, let's go and see the opinions of the youth and their parents on depression. I think it's more common than we actually like to believe. Um, I feel like in our culture people really don't look at depression as a real illness and it should be taken more seriously than it actually is because many, many people are going through a lot of hard times and they become very depressed and um, many people will just say, you know, well just go confess or go go out with your friends or look for other solutions that are not, just, they're going to just dust off the surface of a person being depressed but I think we should consider the fact that um, it is very common and that we need to address it more seriously that way we can help our, our youth um, a lot more than we are now. Thank you for participating with us and giving us your honest opinion. Depression is a problem many youth face. It often disguises itself as normal mood swings due to puberty or youth anxiety. Therefore, it is often ignored until something more serious happens, like a suicide attempt or a serious risk-taking behavior, which ends up getting the youth into trouble. People often use the word depression to cover everything from disappointment over losing a baseball game to the terrifying gloom that drives people to suicide. We all go through certain depressions in our lives which can be caused by anything around us. You can get depressed from small things like being sick for, long, uh, for too long, hearing of a sick person, feeling neglected or not loved, stressed, overeating, overstudying, lack of faith, and the list goes on and on. Depression has been called the common cold of mental disorders. And one source estimates that it disrupts the lives of 30 to 40 million Americans. Now let's go and answer the first question. What are the signs that may be associated with depression in you? Keep in mind that features of major depressive disorders in children are the same as they are for adults. However, recognition and diagnosis of the disorder may be more difficult in youth for several reasons. The way symptoms are expressed varies with the developmental stage of the youngster. In addition, children and young adolescents with depression may have difficulty in properly identifying and describing their internal emotional mood states. For example, instead of communicating how bad they are, they may act out and be irritable toward others, which may be interpreted simply as misbehavior or disobedience. Signs of depression in youth may include the following. Frequent, vague, non-specific physical complaints such as headaches, muscle aches, stomach aches or tiredness. Frequent absences from school or poor performance in school. Talk of or efforts to run away from home. Outbursts of shouting, complaining, unexplained irritability or crying. Being bored. Lack of interest in playing with friends. Alcohol or substance abuse. Social isolation and poor communication. Fear of death. Extreme sensitivity to rejection or failure increased irritability, anger or hostility, reckless behavior, 
difficulty with relationships, Diagnosing and treating children and adolescents with depression is critical to prevent impairment in academic, social, emotional and behavioural functioning and to allow children to live up to their full potential. Let's move on to the next question. How common is depression in teenagers? In a rational study conducted by the Centres for Disease Control, 61% of 8th to 10th graders reported feeling sad and hopeless. 36% reported nothing to look forward to and 34% expressed serious thoughts of committing suicide. Did you know that teenage sex doubles the risk of depression in girls? Teenage girls who are sexually active are twice as likely to become depressed, this is a new study. Among teenage girls, 19% who had had sex exhibited symptoms of depression compared to 9.2% of the girls who had not had sex. According to researchers, sex leaves teen girls with feelings of guilt and shame and this contributes to their depression. Despite the very real threat during teen years, many families do not like to talk about depression or suicide with their children. In fact, many believe that discussing this problem makes depression and suicide more likely to happen. In reality, talking to your youth about their feelings may make them feel less hopeless and sad. If your teen exhibiting one or more of the warning signs, you may also want to seek further evaluation of their behavior with a professional. What should I do if I think my teenager is depressed? If you think your teen child is depressed, do not ignore it. If your child is depressed, there are things you can do and steps you can take that will help your teenager overcome their depression. If it turns out he or she is not depressed, you've shown your child that you cared enough to check it out. Either way, you and your teen wins. Here are five things you should do if you think your son or daughter is depressed. Talk with a teenager about your concerns. Share with him or her that you have noticed some signs of depression and what those signs are. Ask your child if they know what is causing these signs. You may find they have an explanation. The most important part of this talk is for you to let your son or daughter know that you are there and you can help. Another point is make an appointment for your teen to see their doctor. There could be a physical reason for them to be showing some of the symptoms you are seeing. Check your family's medical history. You need to know if there is any clinical depression or other mood disorders that may affect your child. Make an appointment for a consultation with a specialist in adolescent psychology. Once you have talked to them, you will feel more comfortable with making an appointment for your teen. You need to not talk to anyone else as much as possible. Keep this to yourself. You need to respect your child's privacy and not share this with everyone in the family. Aim to work on the causes of your depression, not just the symptoms. Scripture points to many issues of sin or conflict that can afflict your emotions. Most counselors would agree that depression can result from other underlying issues. Don't just worry about the depression itself. Check to see what other problems need attention. Being too far away from God and the church can result in losing hope and having no reason to live. We'll move on to the next question. Are there biblical examples of depression and how to deal with it? The Bible does not use the word depression, although it describes people whom we might call depressed. There are numerous biblical references to depression. One of the human race's most common 
and distressing afflictions. It is likely that the first humans to experience depression were Adam and Eve after they sinned against God. Other examples of people in the Bible who suffered much depression are Cain, after killing Abel, Abraham, Jonah, Job of course, Elijah, King Saul, Jeremiah, and of course David. King David had many of his psalms expressing his depression. As he said, I am troubled. I am bowed down greatly. I go mourning all the day long. I ground because of the turmoil of my heart. Let me give you some examples of depression due to guilt. We all heard of Cain, the son of Adam, who disobeyed God. Then the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must master it. And David, the king of Israel, having committed adultery, was depressed until he confessed his sin. As he said, when I kept silent, my bones grew old through my groaning all the day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My vitality was turned into the drought of summer. So to release depression caused by guilt, you cure it by confession and seeking God's forgiveness. Psalm 32, 5 says, I acknowledged my sin to you and my iniquity I have not hidden. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. St. John said, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Keep this in mind. When you're depressed, place your hope in God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Although things may be difficult, Christians can avoid deep depression. Remember what Jesus Christ went through for us. Remember what the Apostle Paul experienced. Yet he remained focused on the eternal rather than the temporary. When we maintain faith and keep our focus on God's love and the hope he has given us for eternity, we as Christians can weather the storms of life. It can be done. Philippians 4.1 commands us to rejoice, whether we feel like it or not. And James 1.2 asks us to consider it all joy when we fall into various trials. Notice that James doesn't tell us to feel joyful. He tells us to choose the th to think about your situation as a spot where you can have joy. Have strong faith. Choosing to trust truth rather than your feelings may require a lot of faith. And if that is what we mean by asking if faith can solve depression, then faith may be enough in some cases. Trusting what God says rather than your feelings is certainly a more realistic approach to life. Depression is a complex area and severe problems of depression deserve the attention of a priest or other counsellor. Now let's go and see what our early fathers say about depression. Sickness in the body can also cause depression in our fathers, the saints. For example, Saint Basil was only 50, but he was an old man. Work, sickness and trouble had worn him out. His health had never been good. A chronic liver complaint was a constant cause of distress and depression. And if then there is any consolation in Christ, any fellowship of the Spirit, 
any mercy and pity fulfill my prayer. Put a stop to my depression. Let there be a beginning of brighter things for the future. Let's move on to the story on depression. Seven, the age of ballet lessons and Barbie dolls of learning to add and subtract simple numbers. The time when the family dog is your closest companion. Seven, the age of innocence. I was a typical looking child. I had long straight brown hair that fell past my shoulders. My almond shaped hazel eyes were always full of adventure and curiosity. And I had a smile that could brighten a bleak winter day. I was a happy child with a loving family and many friends who loved to perform skits on home videos. I was a leader in school, not a follower. My best trait was my personality. I had imagination, but what made me special was not seen from the outside. I had a special love for life. At age 12, my life had a huge breakdown. It was then that I developed obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD. OCD is a disorder that is the result of chemical imbalance in the brain. People with OCD don't think the same way as people with chemically balanced brains. People with OCD do rituals. I started to wash my hands 10 times an hour to avoid germs and I constantly checked my kitchen oven to make sure that it was off. This way of life for me continued for four agonizing years and by then my OCD had led to depression. I was no longer the happy little girl I had been. In the 10th grade, I finally confessed to my mother that I was suffering from depression along with my OCD. I couldn't take the emotional pain anymore. I needed help if I wanted to continue living. My mum took me to a doctor the same week. I started taking medicine that would hopefully cure my OCD and depression. Over the course of a few months, the medicine did help the OCD. I stopped doing rituals. I no longer took four showers a day to avoid germs. But one thing didn't change. I still was overwhelmed with depression. I still was constantly sad and I started to believe that my life no longer mattered. One autumn evening, two years ago, I hit rock bottom. I thought that my life no longer had meaning because I no longer brought joy to other people like I did when I was little. I decided suicide was the only solution to my depression problem. So I wrote a suicide note to all my friends and family. In the note, I expressed that I was sorry for deciding to leave them, but that I thought it was for the best. As I was folding the note, my eyes fell on a photograph. It was a picture of an adorable little girl with natural blonde highlights in her brown hair from spending so much time in the sun. She was wearing her red soccer uniform and held a biking helmet in her small hands. She had a carefree smile on her face that showed she was full of life. It took me a few minutes to realize who the girl in the photo was. The photo had been taken one weekend at my uncle's house when I was seven years old. I almost couldn't believe that smiling child was me. I felt a chill go down my spine. It was like my younger self and sent me a message. Right then and there, I knew I couldn't kill myself. Once I had been a strong little girl and I had to become strong like that again, I tore up my suicide note and vowed that I would not rely only on my medicine to help my depression. I would have to fight depression with my mind too. I could make myself happy again. It has been two years since I rediscovered myself. I am OCD and depression free. I still take medicine to keep my disorder at bay. But the real reason I am healed is because 
I took action and refused to let depression ruin my life. I learned a lifelong lesson. Never give up. Life is good. Everyone has challenges in life, but everyone can survive. I am living proof of that. Also, it is important to keep smiling because in the end everything will work out. Of course, my life can still be a struggle, but I pull through with a smile on my face. I know I can't give up on life. I am here for a reason. Sometimes I think it was strange that I had to look to who I was as a little girl in order to regain faith in myself at age 18. But I think everyone can look back on their early years and see that it was then that they knew how to live in peace and happiness. I am prepared for whatever challenges life may bring. I have a role model to look up to for strength and who is guiding me through life. Have hope in God. I hope you enjoyed our story. This ends the episode for today on teen depression. I hope you enjoyed this topic and that it will help those who are depressed to look at the source of life and love, our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. See you in our next episode where we will discuss the issue on teenage friends. Meet us next week and tell your friends and your family to join you. God bless you and see you then. Mm-hmm.